Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to continue our missing character series, where we'll go over excerpts of lore, talk about their rules on the tabletop, and how they could be translated into Total War Warhammer. Today's character is Tamukhan, the Maggot Lord, so without further ado, let's begin. To better acquaint this character to people who might not be aware of him, we'll read over his entry into the 8th edition supplement known as Tamukhan, the Throne of Chaos. Tamukhan the Maggot Lord, one of the most powerful champions of Nurgle to rise up in the Chaos Wastes. For many centuries, numerous legends and lies clustered about Tamukhan, long before he had gathered his great horde. And in fulfillment of prophecy, struck out like a poison talon at the wider world beyond the chaos wastes. Some tales speak of him to be the millennia old scion of the great Kurgan, one of four sons, mighty and terrible, who each set out to the four winds to conquer in the service of the four great powers of chaos. Others had it that he was no more than vermin once, a corpse canker grown fat and clever on the spoiled entrails of the battlefield, swelled up and transfigured in the basking light of the eternal battle in the uttermost north. In either case, he was an arrogant, savage and monstrous warlord, and a true reveller in decay and death, fated as one of Father Nurgle's most favoured children for the carnage and suffering he had wreaked in his god's name. As the leader of a decaying warband of fanatical acolytes and twisted monstrosities and riding upon his mighty mount Bubulus, the Toad Dragon, Tamukhan carved a bloody path for himself on the road to victory, amassing around him a great host in his master's name. Tamukhan, as he called himself, was not as other warlords and warriors of chaos, but was subject to a terrible mutation as truly hideous as it was rare. In mortal form, he had been transformed into a befouled, maggot-like creature the size of a human child, grey-green and rotting, studded with lambently glowing corpse-like eyes, and a needle-like snout that split open to reveal row upon row of glassy, razor-barbed teeth. More awful yet than even his form was the creature's ability to fall upon a human or near-human victim and spear into its flesh, bore deep within, and devour it from the inside out. Inhabiting its dead flesh like a puppet, turning his victim into a stolen second skin in which to do battle. Thus empowered did Tomokhan prove all but unstoppable, and many mighty foes fell before him. Even if the enemy managed to best him, the true beast would show its face, and the temporary victor would then become Tamukhan's newly rotting host. At the outset of Tamukhan's attempted incursion into the Old World, he wore the flesh of Sargaf the Vain, once a powerful champion of Slaanesh, and took great joy in the slow decay of the warrior's formerly beautiful flesh and the corrosion of his bejeweled armour. This body, which he had worn for nearly a year, failed him however in single combat against the raw strength and brute skill of the ogre tyrant Karaka Break Mountain, and was cut down only for Tamukhan to rise again in the tyrant's flesh and bone. This perhaps proved his undoing, as never before had Tamukhan tasted such unrestrained strength and fury. And even though the body continued to rot and sustain grievous injury, he would not abandon it. There were those, even in his own camp, that maintained that something of the Ogre King's savage spirit remained within it to worry at the Maggot Lord, who seemingly became increasingly dull-witted and crude as the hulking frame rotted around him. Tamukhan was an incredibly impressive and unique character in the Warhammer Fantasy Battles universe. His stats all around were generally quite high, high weapon skill, strength, toughness, wounds, initiative, attacks and leadership. But it was his special rules that made him truly unique. In terms of generic special rules, he had Unbreakable, Mark of Nurgle and Fear. Those are standard special rules, but now we go as follows. Feast of the Maggot Lord. If Tamukhan's current body is slain, the true beast inside, a rotting maggot-like parasite, will immediately attempt an attack and possess a new host, gnawing its way beneath their flesh and consuming their brains and organs from within. 
This special rule is then divided into two sections, the first being the possession attack. If Tamukan is slain in close combat, a special possession attack is made against the model that delivered the final wound to Tamukan. If Tamukan's death occurs as a result of shooting or other means, the attack will be made against the nearest eligible model, friend or enemy, within 6 inches. Both players roll a d6 and add the weapon skill value of their respective model. If the result is a draw, roll again until one side wins. If Tamukan's player wins, the victim is killed outright, and their body is possessed. From then onwards, Tamukan takes over the victim's model, which is detached from its unit and placed one inch away from it. The model is now controlled by Tamukan's player for the rest of the game exactly as if he were their own character model. Only infantry and monstrous infantry models are eligible to be possessed. The next part of this rule is the possessed. Basically, this has a lot of tabletop stuff, so I'll explain it in brief. So, you would take control of the enemy model, containing all its original stats, weapon skill, strength, and so on, but then add in an extra wound, an extra initiative value, and an extra point of toughness, as this is now a model of Nurgle, after all. Tamukan now uses any weapons or armor the victim had, including magical types, discarding both his own and any equipment the victim already has. Likewise, any enemy mounts are not used, monstrous mounts now count as having lost their rider. And any ability the victim had as a wizard is lost. This includes any special rules the victim formerly used other than those that are part of their unit type. So what is this rule? Essentially, if Tamukan gets killed, he can take over an enemy body. He can't truly be killed unless the maggot itself is killed. He takes over the victim, gaining their stats and adding a few extra to it, and this can only be done to humanoids or monstrous infantry, so it won't be done to giants and so on. It can't be broken, for example dying to a wizard and then taking over said wizard, but it's still a very powerful rule. It's also important to note that Tamukan's power cannot save him if he is destroyed by an attack which causes a model to be slain outright, rather than causing wounds. However, I don't think that there's anything like that in Total War Warhammer, at least not to my knowledge currently, so it's not like this would be an issue here. So could this rule be translated into Total War Warhammer? I mean, it's very possible. It could be worked as follows. Should Tamukan be slain, then a smaller version of Tamukan will spawn from his body, very similar to how clan rats currently spawn from a Hellpit Abomination. Then he would have a certain amount of time to either sacrifice one of his own characters, where even immortal characters would be deleted permanently, or try and take out one of the enemy characters in an effort to possess them. For the remainder of the match, he would use the stats of the enemy that he took over, and then I assume that afterwards, as soon as the match has ended, he would revert back to whatever form he had, either that of Sargaf or the Tyrant. I doubt that the possession mechanic would be turned into a permanent thing, rather a temporary way to more or less keep your hero alive? Does that make sense? Because it might be a bit weird. It could also be that they just might make him have some really high regeneration value, but I don't think that that would be too fair on Tamukan. His last special rule is Nurgle's favoured son. We won't go over it as it is more tabletop specific than anything else, but basically it just means that he should be a lord choice. Tamukan had two special items. Each one was actually tied to one specific model, were he Sargaf or the Tyrant. Tamukan's Rune Blade was only available if he was as Sargaf, the former champion of Sunesh. This gave him the armor piercing special rule and to inflict multiple wounds with every attack. Essentially, this would be translated that he would do more weapon damage and also have armor piercing. The last special item is the Black Cleaver. This was a great weapon which was only available to Tamukan should he be in possession of the Ogre Tyrant. Essentially, anything that took a wound from this weapon must also take a toughness test, or suffer a permanent reduction of minus one toughness to their toughness score. I could see this having a sort of debuff aura. Anything that would take damage from this weapon might also have their armor values reduced. Something like that is simple enough. Now, there is a rule that Tamukan has for both of his forms that we haven't gone through yet. 
In either form, Tamukan rides the toad dragon Bubalos into battle. He must always ride Bubalos, so let's take the time to read over Bubalos' entry into the very same book. Bubalos the Toad Dragon. Toad dragons are huge, reeking primeval horrors. They are, for the fate of the world, blessedly few in numbers, and confined largely to the trackless, otherworldly fens known as the Cold Myers, under the coarserating skies of the uttermost north. It is here it is said that Tamukan, chosen son of Nurgle, tracked and using unspeakably foul rites, bound to his will Bubalos, greatest of all toad dragons and carrion thing of Nurgle, to be his mount and carry him southward. Bubalos is an impossibly huge creature, a lumbering horror from a forgotten age, whose flesh festers with unwholesome rot, and whose black blood is clotted with maggots and carrion worms. The strength of this colossal beast is prodigious, as is its appetite. While its tainted breath is so corrosively foul, it can liquefy flesh and wither steel in moments. Those it does not devour or smash flat, it can smother beneath its furculent bulk as it crawls across the earth, its questing tongue darting out with terrifying speed to snatch up more victims to disappear down its yawning maw. Bubalos on the tabletop was very fast for a creature of Nurgle, having average weapon skill but very high toughness, strength and wound values. This was a terrifying beast and represented so via his special rules. Firstly, for its generic rules, the beast has immune to psychology, mark of Nurgle and terror. But its specific ones are as follows, Colossal Beast. Such is the vast size of this beast, it is uncommonly hard to kill by normal means. Its bulk and resilience is such that arrows and blades are of little more account than pinpricks, and even cannon fire and powerful magics must strike at the vitals of such a creature in order to slay it. This creature may only be wounded by attacks of strength 4 or higher, and regardless of an attack strength, the great beast may never be wounded on a better than a 4+. Yeah, these rules are way too overpowered, it would make no sense to not be able to hit it with say for example clan rats or basic archers and so on. I think if anything it would just have an extreme amount of HP. It's a balancing thing here, if basic weapons can't harm it, then it would be the most overpowered monster in the game. The creature itself is so massive it can crush dozens beneath its bulk, where in the tabletop this monster had the Thunderstop special rule which inflicted 2d6 hits. This would probably work in a very similar sense to how the Dread Saurian works because it's more or less around the same size. It wouldn't do damage outright walking, but it would do damage in sense of pure mass as it would throw itself about and do damage AoE style. Next is Unspeakable Foulness. Bubalos may exhale a blast of flesh-rotting foulness from his gaping jaws. Any unfortunates caught in the path of this tide of horror suffer the most appalling fate imaginable, as their flesh sloughs from their bones and their lungs fill with blood and pus. This is a breath weapon attack, and any model caught within its template is automatically hit and must take a toughness test at minus one or suffer d3 wounds. No armor saves can be taken against this attack. Okay, translating this into Warhammer, it would most likely be a breath weapon he could use once or twice per battle, which would ignore armor saves. And finally, we have Tongue Lash. In addition to the Toad Dragon's normal attacks, it may make a special lash attack with its befouled and venomous slurping tongue. This single attack may be inflicted against any enemy model in base contact with a Toad Dragon. It is a strength 4 poison attack with the always strikes first rule. Maybe this could be translated into a Warhammer as a short AoE, where anything within a 180 degree arc in front of him would take damage. Something like that seems doable. Now we've discussed both lore and rules for this character and his mount, so now we have the question, how would they be implemented into the Total War Warhammer universe? Well, should the Kurgans not be added in as a special unique race, they would obviously be part of the Warriors of Chaos roster. As in the tabletop, they were considered to be Warriors of Chaos characters. The only thing that might be a bit difficult would be the whole two bodies representing the same character. Yes, I am aware that we have both Malice and his Sineshi friend that does that, 
But this is a bit more different, as not only would they require two different models, but they would also need two different models for Bubalos too, wouldn't they? So it could fit well for both different frames. In all honesty, it would probably make sense if this character was only implemented with one body, most likely the last one he used before he was given true death, that of the Ogre Tyrant. It just seems like it's easier to do, you'd have the Ogre Tyrant on foot, and then when you level Tamukan enough, then you would unlock Bubalos as a mount. And given his unique abilities, in terms of faction mechanics, I believe that Tamukan's own specific army would probably benefit from the regeneration special rule, yeah, the whole army. It might be a bit overpowered, but then again, you know, it's something for a campaign mechanic. This wouldn't translate to multiplayer. But what do you guys think about Tamu Khan and his Mount Bubalos? How do you think they would be implemented into the Total War Warhammer series? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. And before anyone asks, yes, I do own this model and it's been unpainted and unbuilt in my pile of shame for, well, years. I really should get this guy done at some point. But with that, my friends, we come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various different social media links such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord where you can get in contact with a great book team. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Using our special link and also our special code, both of which can be found in our description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A special thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Pence and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Huell and VS Vasan for subscribing to us at our fame level. Honestly, I can't thank you guys enough for the support. It really means a lot to me, especially since all the money earned from Patreon goes directly back onto the channel. New webcam, equipment, microphones, and so on. And a big thank you to all of you liking, sharing, commenting on these videos. Honestly, I'm really enjoying creating this content and chatting to all of you guys about speculation, new content, and so on. It's absolutely awesome. It's been nice to make a few friends along the way. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and I shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.